Life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hey Spinner Rack Kids, this is Corey. And this is Marshall. And we're here to talk about some indie comic books. Uh, Marshall and I had a conversation the other night and he really vented to the point of exhaustion about his frustration with the superhero comic book companies, the big two, Marvel mm -hmm. and DC. Yeah. Well, was... I think that may be a full-on discussion elsewhere, but a lot of it is that they've been going for so long, they're so devoted to franchise rather than storytelling that there is no more stakes and there's no real entry point anymore. When he got to that point of ultimate exhaustion, I said, then friend, let me introduce you to indie comic books. So I, this is really interesting to go into something that isn't the big two. I'm not entirely certain if I consider Image to be entirely indie, but these aren't the big ones. Right. Now, when he says about I Image, Image started out as an indie mm -hmm. comic book yeah. company, but because of Walking Dead and other titles like it has gotten to be now part of the top three, it's kind of created itself as the top three. So I've been reading these books since around 2005, indie books that I was listening to on other podcasts, just finding out about new stuff because I lived with the comic the standard you know superhero genre for a long time so i was always looking and curious to see what else is out there and the best way to describe the first book we're going to talk about is it's basically an hbo show yeah in comic book form so it's that level of dr drama suspense intensity that you get from sopranos or breaking bad or and a breaking bad side hbo but still that kind of intensity before we really get into it what you drinking? Oh, yes. Because I wasn't scheduled to be the person talking to you today, I still stuck with my bi-antioxidant infusion of Zambia Bing Cherry. It happened to be what was in the fridge. The only thing that was in the fridge, actually. And I've got some Panera coffee, but I'm doing something a little weird with it today. We had decided we wanted to have something just a little bit heartier, and we didn't feel like cooking. So we went to get Kiki's breakfast cafe at the same time we went to Panera's for coffee because we get the free coffee deal and I had some leftover maple syrup from my wow. waffles and I threw that in there and I'm half regretting it half not <laughs> I'm not entirely certain how I feel about this sugar dip <laughs> yeah this is this is mm, no so he had me read trade paperbacks of two particular ones. The first title is Southern Bastards and the other one is Huck. And we're going to give you really quickly, there is going to be some spoilers probably. We're not going to work very hard to spoil the plot for you, but I'm not going to hold us to no spoilers. So if you're if you're planning on reading these, go ahead and read them and come back and listen because okay. we're going to have a discussion. First off, I got to start with who wrote this. Mm -hmm. Who did this came from? His name is Jason Aaron. He'd been in the indie world, wrote a book, and SJWs Don't Come After Me, this is the name of the book, it's called Scalped. And it's about, it's basically like a Sopranos, but set on an in-reservation mm -hmm. casino. So he had done that book, that's the first book I kind of followed on him, but this guy is now, has written the Star Wars stuff. He's, his career kind of blew up just because he was such a good author. And I think it's also important to note, he is from Alabama, which is yep. where this country, this uh, story the state that this story is set in. He's one of the best, one of my favorite authors. He's just so talented. What I can tell you is that I felt in the writing of this, I was like, yeah, this guy definitely comes from Alabama. Every time a character talks in this, I can hear it. Yeah, it's and, a voice. And it it's doesn't just it doesn't just sound from the top of my head. It sounds from like inside of me <laughs> that you know that the way that they're talking is true. One quick thing about him, when he did the Star Wars thing, you could hear Harrison Ford, yeah, Carrie Fisher, and Mark Hamill in those voices. when they re This is when they rebooted for 2015. 
a super talented guy, but I think it's kind of important to maybe talk. For me, I want to talk a little bit about my personal connection to this. Uh, my family is, orig- uh, at least on my mom's side, is originally from the South, from Texas. I also was raised in a Southern Baptist church in California. So it had this interesting dichotomy there. My dad was actually a Southern Baptist minister. So I had this very Southern culture because there were a lot of older Southern people around all the time. So with just seeing the name of this, I was curious, especially because I knew the author, and it's about paternal issues, which um, oh, yeah. I had a good relationship with my dad, but he had a strained relationship with his dad. So those issues are, I'm always a sucker for a father-son type story. Basically, this first graphic novel of it, this trade, uh, has two portions of a story, and it hints to the third portion. And the first half is this guy who's coming down because his uncle had a stroke and his uncle was living in his dad's house after his dad had died. And his dad was a mean old cuss, but he was also the town sheriff. And he was known for this one incident where he beat up a whole bunch of people using a stick that had been signed by somebody. Um, Signed by Bear Bryant, who's a very famous Alabama... Uh, college football coach. Good. That, yeah. Thank you. That's important for me to know because I don't do sports ball. Yeah, yeah. There was. Oh, I just know from like hearing yeah. people talking movies. But there was another name on there. I can't remember. But it was another sports person. But yeah. So go ahead. And so this was almost like an Excalibur weapon. Mm-hmm. It's the Southern Excalibur, and it was buried with his father. So this guy comes back down to town to pack up all the stuff in the house and finds that the town is just mired in corruption mm-hmm. and hateful behavior, and. He's trying to get himself free of it all when lightning strikes his dad's grave and the tree that was growing over the grave breaks open, revealing the stick. I knew you I knew that would be your moment. But let's get back a little bit. So one of the things I remember saying is this story is compressed. Yes. So they set it in a small town in Alabama. And who would be most likely to be the strongest person in the town? Not even the sheriff. We're talking small town south. That's the football coach. Yep. So that's where the corruption lies. So it really is so well thought out and tense and in your face, but in a good way. Like if you like Breaking Bad, how it's constantly nonstop tension. This this book and the and the art is gorgeous. I'm gonna just talk on that for a second. Oh yeah. The art is amazing. It's very if you think in the terms of your paint you buy at the store, this is matte. It's not glossy, if that makes yeah. sense. And if you've ever read Hellboy, yep. it's like That's that. That's exactly what I was thinking style. of. But the other thing I was thinking this time reading, because I'm reading it again, is the way the lines are on the faces and the hands of the people, they look wooden. Yes. As if to say they're not going anywhere. They're not progressing with their lives. They're stuck in the dirt. So I thought that was really cool that I noticed that this time. Very limited color palette, too. So I, I love it. There's, there's this one guy that comes in and he's drunk or on drugs and really bright red eyes. Mm-hmm. But in this muted tone, it looked really cool. It really popped out really cool. And then the second half of the story then goes and tells the backstory of the football coach that you already wanted to hate Mm -hmm. and tries to make him feel better, but it explains how he got to be corrupted. Right, right. And then it just kind of leaves off with, oh, by the way, the daughter of the guy that was in the first half of the story, she's about to come and lay some whooping on somebody. Mm-hmm. I think it's ongoing. I know there's multiple volumes of it. This is the first volume we're talking about. Image is great. If you go into a comic book store, generally speaking, these trades are like nine ninety nine. Yeah, they are very like consumer focused. I really appreciate that about them. It struck me like the lightning that hit the tree when I read this. I mean, it was just so well paced, well thought out. Like the whole Excalibur thing, he said, if you're not familiar with wood, there's soft wood and hard wood. So this is like a, basically a stick that you would think, oh, it's going to be, if he's walking around with a stick, it's going to be a baseball bat. No, this is just an old kind of limb of a tree that's just hard enough for him to use. Now, there is a movie precedent that people would probably recognize in this if they're from my era, which is called Walking Tall. Actually, Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne The Rock Johnson did a reboot of that. 
so that's kind of touching on that what where somebody just comes in they're not the sheriff but they clean up the town that guy had a baseball bat so that's kind of another touchstone but at the same time that there's this element especially with just how rough unit is and this stick it's the symbol of the right to to rule the town and you're right this was a very compressed book and it was rough for me to read hmm. to be honest i got out of it and there's different ways that a story deals with darkness right so you you have a lot of your superhero stories and they're they kind of skip over the darkness almost yeah there's bad guys but all they did is steal 40 pies and that's as many as four tens and that's terrible but then you start getting deeper and deeper into it and some other stories they revel in the darkness. They love the darkness. And everything is dark and evil and nasty. And you come out feeling like you've been drenched in somebody else's spinal fluid. And then you have a book like this mm -hmm. that does that to you for a reason. It's yeah. to say, there is something horribly wrong here. Why are you not the one with the stick? Pardon me to get scriptural, but yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It's that kind of stuff. And the fact that, you know, he and I were raised in the church. We're not mm -hmm. going to be super spiritual on this podcast. But when you were talking about something like this, we kind of have to talk about what our experience is. And to see a tree like that, the trees in the, in the garden, it's where Satan tempted Adam and Eve. That imagery is there for sure because we know the South is going to be the last one to give up. It's like this thing when sometimes people try to like really jam in a message. That's not what this is. It's the culture of the South mm -hmm. for them to put this imagery in. And it's honestly like kind of like dogma with Kevin Smith. It was like it's this guy kind of dealing with his heritage and how... And I know it's not popular to talk about white Southern <laughs> heritage, but this one is very like very conscious very well thought out let me also bring up since we're talking about biblical imagery the tree that grew from his father's grave that was hiding the stick the whole time it grew up since his dad died and is dead mm -hmm. it's does a lot because i mean when you look in biblical imagery there's this tree that no longer bears fruit mm -hmm. and i just love that little bit that it's like all these symbols are there but they're compressed and nobody takes the time to just sit there and decompress them for you instead they're gonna let you have this diamond stuck in charcoal and let you figure out how to get the charcoal out of it yeah I can tell you this I read this book probably like maybe five years ago maybe more I'm not sure and the one things I remember other than the main characters that is that tree and that lightning mm -hmm. and that stick. The way it's illustrated is just, it, it, it sticks with you. Basically, I wasn't devious when I gave this to Marshall as much as it hit him. I was literally just looking through my favorite indie books and that was one of the first ones to come along on my list. At least I balanced it out with the next book. Um, now, Huck, also from Image, this was written by Millar and yeah. it was drawn by Albuquerque, at least the uh, issue that I have up on my screen. Yeah, yeah, no, and, the whole thing is, yeah. Oh my gosh, I just, after having all that darkness compressed from Southern Bastards, I read Huck and it's just, ha. <sighs> yeah, this book, um, my criticism of a lot of writing usually comes around to TV. The procedural, people love procedurals, and I, I guess they like seeing the bad guys get caught. At this point, they've been on TV for so long now, starting with Law & Order all the way through. My mom loved Law & Order. My dad used to say, they find the body, they talk to the neighbors, then they go to court. <laughs> it's like every every episode is that same, same method. And I've got burned out on that. And so the reason why I bring that up is there are some comics that love just talking tactical and the story just gets bogged down in a lot of the dialogue because like movies and tv it's a visual medium you don't have to belabor the dialogue to make it work and this one 
there are no what I'm now referring to as road bumps in this one. You can't believe how fast you read this book. Yeah. It just goes woo. And a lot of the imagery is him running real fast or riding a train. But just to let you know, Mark Millar did um, Kick Ass. If you saw the movie mm -hmm. uh, Kick Ass, he's done, I think he did Marvels. Is that correct? You have to check. I'm pretty sure he did Marvels. Kingsman. I'm. Uh, I've read what I've read of his. I'm not saying, like, I'm a huge fan. I, it's not that I don't like him. I just haven't really invested a lot into him. But I saw this book come up, and the art is what stuck with me, really. Yeah. Firstly, it's very it's this new style of, like, cartoony but not cartoon, if that makes sense. It's got an innocence to it. It's very sketchy, so it's not just super clean lines. There's a lot of sketch work in there like my old favorite Disney stuff with the Jungle Book where you could kind of see the sketches still in it but this kid Huck so it's like this big guy lives in a small town he's basically that town's hero and as you, you kind of like know that he has superpowers but you kind of don't really get a picture of what they are they really like pace this out really well and basically is he can find lost things so he is super innocent because he was well loved he was dropped off in the town as a baby so he's a super nice he's like these people love me they take care of me so i'm going to take care of them and he'll just write out his list for the day and it's like help somebody find their cat help somebody as innocent and pure as you could think of as it goes into the later uh, parts of it you find the villains and that but it never really gets dark no it always stays super light that's why this is one of my favorite no, but the newer books, I'm not sure what year it came out, but it's beautiful. It's really, it's like a superhero book when you say it's beautiful. I don't know, but it's just, it's the, my favorite kind of things coming together in one piece. I really yeah. love it. Now, what's really interesting, yeah, this is from 2015 and 2016. Um, right when but, we needed it. <laughs> yeah. The character of Huck, as I saw him, first off, this is a character who is on the spectrum. He is such a nice guy. But yeah, he's got some mental issues, and they they recognize that. But that is actually what makes him such a good, innocent character. Yeah, people try to bully him, but it never even affects him. Yeah, he doesn't care. He's like, oh, okay, fine. But also, this character, when I'm watching him, is all the best parts of Superman and Goku from Dragon Ball. Now, he's super innocent. He's from the down south, and he's got these superpowers, and it has nothing to do with what do I want in life. How can I make other people happy? How can I bring joy to others? And other than that, I'm just going to live. And it makes for just an, a much more open story. Other people try to use him like politicians, mm -hmm. and he's just like, yeah, this isn't really for me. See ya. Oh, one of the best examples, so the governor is trying to co-opt him for some kind of political thing. It's so good. He's in the hotel or something, or, but he's at this party. And uh, uh, I can't remember the first thing he does that's benevolent. But Yeah, his his first thing was like, oh, wow, I see all these cats out there yeah. that, that are going hungry and they're rooting through the trash. I'm just going to get all the fish and chicken. And then there's some homeless guys in the alley, and they're like, wow, I wish I could have that kind of dinner. And he's like, well, you can't? Well, here, I've got a home, I've got a bed, I don't need two more, have these. Bye. Yeah. I just, I, I loved it. It breaks your heart. It's just beautiful. It's so sweet. Yeah, I love, I mean, that's the thing. He was talking about darkness earlier. And when it comes to TV, I have to kind of protect myself, especially since I'm, I'm at home right now during this whole pandemic and everything. So I have to really kind of like, I can't go too dark. And this, this was... Nice to read again to have it during this time to say, oh, they can. It doesn't always have to be the the bottom of the gutter to be to be dramatic. It was it was really good. And let me be honest, on that scale, this this does a very different thing, where the main character is so bright, so good that even though the evil that's around him is truly evil, is very dark. Yeah, it don't matter. He's just so bright that it you can't see it. Also, there is other references to Dragon Ball Z in this. I'm not sure if you Are know they? this. The, uh, the two android characters that you see in there have the names of androids out of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it, that's funny. Yeah. That's really funny. 
wonder if like Mark Millar's kids love Dragon Ball Z, so mm, he put it more in. Than likely. So somebody asked him to find his daughter because they think she's in the city doing drugs or whatever. And so the her boyfriend he says you want to talk about respect, <laughs> and the Hux just, he tosses the guys out of the window and says not particularly. Yeah, I love that. That was one of my favorite uh, simple lines. It, it definitely gave me some laughs. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Now this isn't the only comic book content that we've taken in over the last couple weeks. So here's the thing: the reason why I'm bringing up indie books is because I I lived out here in Florida for what since 2010 so about almost 11 years or actually 11 years and i worked was fortunate to work at a place where we just kind of nerded out with everybody that worked with me and we loved talking about this stuff and every time i brought up indie comic books people just gave me this blank stare like no nah, i'm reading my superheroes no nah, i'm like dude you're missing out it's like people have that dividing line where like, I'll watch that kind of stuff on TV, but I won't invest in a comic book of it. And it's just missing out. And so um, what he's referring to is we watched this movie called The Losers from a while back. And it's got super, it's got a Captain America before he was Captain America, but after he was Johnny Storm. And it's just a fun uh, Merc story. It's got Chris Evans. It's got Idris Elba. It's got the guy that played Negan, which I'm blanking on his name right now. The guy that played Negan in Walking Dead. Zoe Saldana is in it. And it's just about these mercs that are called to do something violent in South America. And then they end up doing something benevolent, but then they get burnt. And so they have to figure out how to get back, um, not only in the country, but also take care of the guy that left them there to die, basically. It's just a lot of fun. There's one particular scene if you go and watch it, you'll know the particular scene I'm talking about. I don't even have to tell you what it is. You'll just know. It's that memorable of a scene. It's, and it involves Chris, Chris Evans. But mm-hmm. So that was fun. It's a fun movie. It's not the best movie I've ever seen, but it's a fun... It, it, it keeps it light and it has heart. In it. And yet, it came from DC. It was from Vertigo. Exactly. So what I want to do is I looked up this list. Movies that you didn't know were comic books. So, I'll go over what I can remember right now. So, we have The Losers, obviously. Um, We have V for Vendetta, which is kind of a little bit more on the obvious side. Um, But how about a movie with America's sweetheart, Tom Hanks, called Road to Perdition? Mm Mm-hmm. That was, that was I, I actually at one point had that graphic novel, and what was really weird is there was one drawing of the character that looked like Tom Hanks, and that was long before it was ever discussed to be a movie. Wanted is a comic book. You know, the bullet-bending <laughs> movie. Um, yeah. From Hell with Johnny Depp uh, about the Jack the Ripper. One called uh, with Viggo Mortensen called History of Violence, which you just think, oh, that's kind of a mafia movie. It actually was a comic book. A Men in Black. Which yep. makes sense, but, you know... Well, the comic book of Men in Black didn't just deal with aliens. They also dealt with Bigfoot and oh, ghosts. Oh, cryptozoic and stuff like yeah. that. And paranormal. and That's cool. And here's one that you would just never believe. If I walked up to anybody and said, Two Guns, the the uh, the Denzel Washington, Mark Wahlberg movie. Yeah, there's stuff that's just just plain action in there. But if it's well done in the comic form, it's, it still has value. Uh, another one that's now a series, which started out as a movie, is Snowpiercer, which yep. I think has a really kind of a cool d- dynamic. Basically, it's the Earth has turned into a popsicle, basically, and all of society lives on this uh, super fast train that actually has self-renewing energy. And it was only supposed to be for rich people, and some of the poor people ran and bum-rushed the train and got on. So it's all about the front of the train is the high-class and the back, uh, they're called the Tailies, is the lower class. And so, yeah, that's that Chris Evans was in the movie, and David Diggs from Hamilton is the series it's on right now. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. That I found there's some other ones as well. If you just, I just Google searched movies that you didn't know were comic books. My main thing is just plead to you, give them a chance, man. If you, especially if it's an image book, just go to your local bookseller or, you know, even on Amazon, look up an image book read about it find out what the plot is whatever it is if you have an app comic book app if you're ahead of the game you got a comic book app check them out because 
The nice thing is, again, like I said, they should all be $10 trades. If they're not, don't sue me, but I'm pretty sure that's how much it is to get into. So very low barrier of entry to get into some really deep and fun And stuff. I think the main reason why you're getting that out of these comics is because with these indie comics, they don't need to keep a franchise running forever. So they are focused on going, I want to tell a story. I want to impart this feeling, and they're going to give it to you. And that's also what we are looking for in our series here, is that we are trying to share with you comics and comic book-derived media that means something to us, mm -hmm. that brings us joy, that makes us think, so that maybe you can have the same thing. Like a standard of excellence, so you're not just kind of lost in the weeds, just like looking through everything one really cool thing to say about image also is in all the creators that they publish own the rights to yes. their comic books i i could say it again but just rewind because that's a significant thing they just basically are the publisher that they print it up for them but i think that's really kind of really cool and even then like doing their publishing they're also in a way doing their publication they're doing their promoting just by being on the image dime absolutely and that's the thing i, I, I bet the best way to say it, it's tv version because i think comics is very related to tv because it's episodic yeah. is let's look at cbs right now versus something on netflix or that was created for netflix or was created for hbo max or one of those things the level of quality sometimes is higher because number one they don't have to have 22 episodes they can keep it compressed controlled and really good breaking bad was not on a major network so that's an example uh, of that and why that's worth checking out because yeah. a lot of these continuities he said they will drag you through the ringer you'll be like wait waiting for something good to happen sometimes and it's really good to <laughs> keep your joy time invested well Thank you for listening to Spinner Rack Kids and The Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things that we talked about in today's podcast. For updates, keep an eye on at Elated Geek on Instagram or at Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. Or go to our website at www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes, and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. So, keep spinning, kids, and until next time, geek out.